No matter where you come from, no matter where you're going, here's a place where you can take comfort in the knowing that whether if you've come to stay a while or just passing through, this door is open to you. Come and let's be silent. Come and share a hug. Come, let's pray together. Come, love and be loved. From the blessed out to the turned out. From the pampered to the abused. This door is open to you. Come on. A Jew. This, door this door is open, is open to you. Good morning, everyone. Let's stand for our opening song. Love is alive. Welcome to Unity Renaissance. Nice to see the sun, is it not? <sighs> yeah, I marvel how I ever lived in Portland, Oregon for 27 years. <laughs> Great to be together. This has been a, a challenging week in our country. I want to acknowledge that. And you know, after a week of divisiveness and conflict, at least for me, it feels particularly good to come back together today in peace and in oneness. 
honoring each other for who we are, seeing beyond our differences to that beautiful divine light within each and every one of us. So thank you for being here today. Feels good. Well, unity is a positive path for spiritual living. We follow the teachings and the example of our way shower, Jesus, in seeking to more fully love ourselves, love God, and love one another. From that beautiful consciousness of love here at Unity, we honor all paths to God, all names for God, and all expressions of God. And each and every one of you beautiful souls, and each and every one of you watching online today, you are an expression of God. We take it to heart here in Unity that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. And we know that when we tune into our innate divinity, when we tune into the true essence of our being, and we behold that beautiful light in one another, that that light just grows and grows and it shines out to light up the world. Our vision at Unity Renaissance is, together, a spiritually awakened world, living in peace, love, and joy. And we are manifesting that vision through our mission, which is, together, we transform lives that transform the world. Let's begin our time of transformation today in prayer. I invite you to close your eyes. If you wish, take a deep breath in. <sighs> Release and let go. Allowing yourself to let go of your busy morning, any random thoughts. Just sink into this present now moment. Feel the blessings of spirit all around you and within you. We are so grateful as we come together today in the spirit of gratitude. As we prepare for the holidays to come, we particularly pause to connect with the divine, not only in us, but in every being and everything around us. We bless this sacred time of fellowship today, and we bless our awakening as we go forward out into the world with new insights to be the love, to be the change, to make the difference in our world. And for all of this, we are so grateful. Thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. All right, let's all stand for our next song.
everyone. My name is Lisa Smith and I am your platform host for today and I will be reading the daily word. The word for the day is gratitude, perfect for the season. And if you'll join me in saying our affirmation today, as I embrace gratitude, I am filled with an awareness of greatness. It might be tempting to think that we need items and events to be grateful for before we can feel genuine gratitude. However, Unity Minister Eric Butterworth suggested that it's possible to experience the feeling of gratitude without needing a special reason to be grateful. Just feel it, he advised, adding that as we simply allow ourselves to feel gratitude, the flow of intelligence and love and peace and power come through us and manifest as us effectively. The practice of gratitude, Butterworth explained, gets us into a full of greatness consciousness. As I generate gratitude, it lifts my heart, quickens my mind and body, and centers me in the flow of good that is present everywhere. Our scripture for this morning comes from Acts 2.28. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. After the service, we have prayer chaplains who are available to pray with you for gratitude or hope or help, whatever you might need to connect to Source. So we invite you to join them in the chapel afterwards. And if our prayer chaplains for this morning will please stand. Deb uh, and Shelley, uh, so you can see them by their prayer stools here. They'll be waiting for you in the chapel outside the Northex. And let us all continue, or let us all j join them in standing for the Lord's Prayer this morning. Thank you. Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be.
Beautiful. Thank you. What a blessing. Mm. (sighs) 
Well, my favorite holiday of the year is coming up this week, Thanksgiving. Is it anybody else's favorite holiday? I love Thanksgiving. I love being grateful. And this year I'm particularly excited because my family's going to come and be with us. So my daughter and her husband are coming. They're expecting their first child in May. And my son and his wife and my granddaughter Vivian are coming as well. She's two now and the most wonderful grandchild on the planet. Uh, some of you might challenge that. But I'm just really, really excited about it. Just a chance to be together. Appreciate what's important. And I expect many of you begin your Thanksgiving meal the way we do. We go around the table and each person says what they're most grateful for. And typically we say each other, of course, family and friends, our home, our livelihood. We give thanks for babies. <laughs> I'm giving thanks for a new grandchild on the way. You know, just so many things to be grateful for. And it's just such a sweet, meaningful time that we pause and, and give thanks. So one day out of the year, we dedicate to gratitude. And really, it deserves so many more. In fact, ideally, gratitude would be a way of life. We would feel grateful every day. Because research shows that gratitude is so good for us on almost every front. It's good for our health, it's good for our relationships, it's good for our work, it's good for our outlook on life, for our own happiness. David Stendelrassi is a Benedictine monk, and he says, it is not joy that makes us grateful, but gratitude that makes us joyful. Yes, it begins with the practice of gratitude. And as we also know, when we are grateful, our blessings multiply. Now, certainly Jesus knew this and exemplified it. Of the 24 public prayers identified of his in the canonical Gospels, 12 of them, one half, are prayers of thanksgiving. When you think about it, you remember reading him, giving thanks, pretty much all the time. Before Jesus fed the 5,000, it's said that he took that time to give thanks for the five loaves and the two fish before he broke the bread and shared it all with the disciples to give to the crowd. Before Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, it is said that he paused to gaze heavenward and give thanks to God for hearing his prayer. And of course, in the Last Supper, we know that Jesus blessed the bread before he broke it give thanks for that cup of wine before he passed it to the disciples. In all of these ways, gratitude was an embedded part of who he was and how he showed up. And by giving thanks in advance, before the, the outcome had occurred, before the results had occurred, Jesus really connected with the power of God in him. And often, a miracle resulted. That he was giving thanks in advance. And similarly, when we are in a state of gratitude, it quickens the divine energy within us. We actually stir up all that good spiritual energy. You can feel a shift in you when you go to gratitude. And that shifting energy is very expansive. It opens up all sorts of new possibilities for us. John Martini is a spiritual teacher. And he says this about gratitude. He says, do not underestimate the power and depth that gratitude has in connecting you to your own vital forces. Gratitude is the key that opens the gateway of your heart and mind. Wow. Gratitude opens up everything. Well, most of us find it easy to be grateful when things are going well. But what about when they aren't? You know, the Apostle Paul says that we are to give thanks in all things, in all circumstances. All circumstances. But how are we supposed to be grateful during the hard times? The health challenge, or the relationship breakdown, or the job layoff, or the loss of a loved one. You know, there really is only one way to be grateful even when we're in the thick of things. And it's to change the way we see it. To change the way we see it. To remind ourselves, this too shall pass. But even more, to remember that 
no matter what we are going through, no matter how hard it will be, that somehow, some way, good will come of it. There will be a blessing from it. I know that's like terribly hard to remember when you're right in the middle of a challenge. But the truth is, some kind of blessing will come of it. You know, when I went through my divorce in the early 1990s, as I've shared before, it felt like the end of the world. But now, years later, I look back on it, and I realize it was the best thing that could have happened. It was the right thing to have happened because it freed my then husband, or as Richard calls him, my husband. <laughs> it freed him to marry a woman that was a better match for him. He's in Alaska now. <laughs> <laughs> and he's happy, and that's the point. But it also freed me up, of course, to meet and marry my beloved Richard and to pursue a career in ministry. You see, good came of it. And I bet each and every one of you can think of a time in your life when you experienced a major setback or a loss or a very, very challenging time. And you can look back on it and see that some kind of good came from it, that there was some kind of blessing there for you. Yeah. So we can know that. We can know that blessings will come forth no matter what we're going through. And even if we're in the struggle of it, we can just keep that awareness in the back of our mind, kind of a faith, if you will. Just hold the high watch for ourselves, that the blessings will come. Well, I'm sure many of you are thinking, yes, that's good for most things, but there are some circumstances that are so bad or so tragic that no good could come of it. And I understand that. It's it's a little difficult sometimes, and there's a a terrible death or killing or something like that. But I found this book several years ago that kind of made me see it differently, and it's a book called Thank God I. So thank God I dot, dot, dot. And there's actually a website, thankgodi.com. And it's filled with stories of inspiration from people who shared how the worst thing that had happened to them actually led to a great blessing. And these chapter titles are kind of amazing. It's, you know, thank God my husband was an alcoholic. Thank God I was molested. Thank God my wife cheated. Um, Thank God I was abused. Yeah, thank God I lost my mind. It's actually one of these. And as you read the stories, you see how the blessings came. So there's a woman who had herpes. And she, spoke, she wrote about how because she had herpes, she began to take exceptionally good care of herself, her health. And because she did that, she was eventually able to conceive and give birth to a healthy child. And the doctors had told her that wasn't possible. A rape victim speaks about how going through that terrible circumstance, that it led her to self-compassion and forgiveness letting go, and reclaiming her life. A cancer patient shared how cancer was her teacher, that cancer taught her to treasure life and health and relationships, and most of all, the present moment. You see, we don't get to choose everything that happens to us in life, but we always get to choose how we view it. No matter what we are experiencing, we can find something in it to be grateful for. We just have to be willing to look. And the same is true for the people in our lives. You know, everyone who shows up in our lives, including and especially those we consider adversaries, every single one comes bearing gifts. They do. They're giving us opportunities to learn and to grow. They're all part of our spiritual awakening, our spiritual expansion. If we want to learn the lesson rather than getting all wrapped up in the, in the story, one easy way to do it is to ask ourselves, what am I to learn from this? What am I to learn from this? You know, as soon as you ask that question, it takes you out of the, the conflict or the challenge to being sort of the observer and noticing what needs to shift. And if we find ourselves really wedded to our point of view such that we're at an impasse, we can send out a prayer, send in a prayer. How can I see this differently? 
how can I see this differently? You know, when we do something like that, we may find that the person that we've been thinking is getting in our way or being a nuisance or frustrating us is actually there to teach us patience. Someone who is overpowering or we find domineering or maybe even being a little bit of bully, that person is teaching us how to find our own voice and to speak our truth. The person who's lashing out in all directions, that individual is giving us an opportunity to learn compassion. You see, everyone is our teacher, and everything brings lessons. And knowing that, knowing that, we can be grateful. Well, there's one other area of gratitude that we don't usually talk about too much, but I think it's foundational. And it's being grateful for ourselves. When is the last time you were grateful for yourself? Like, hey, I'm all right. I'm a good soul. Yay me. (laughs) Appreciating the divine light that you are. Appreciating how kind you are. How giving, how caring. The many ways in which you bless other people, more ways than you even know about. You see, appreciating ourselves opens the way for us to appreciate others. Well, this week we had uh, Jeanne de Kian here. She was teaching this class on the eight bows, how to rise in consciousness to divine union, to, to awakening, basically. And on that first night, she said that as we become more spiritually aware and awake, that we reach a point where we really cannot tolerate injustice. You know, that we, we cannot stay silent because something, something in it, just, we just can't, can't deny that or ignore that. Well, I went home that night, and I really began thinking about it. And where my thoughts led was to this idea that I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough. I'm not, I'm not visible enough. I'm not vocal enough. I'm not, I'm not taking a stand on these social uh, justice issues, equal rights, things that really are important to me. I'm, I'm, really, I'm really not out there. I should probably be leading demonstrations or writing op-eds. And then it kind of, kind of began to snowball a little bit. I should be more like Martin Luther King. <laughs> I, should be more, I should be more like Gandhi. I should be more like Harriet Tubman. How many of you have seen that movie? Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. We're going to show it here. And then, of course, it just, you know, mushroomed from there. I should be more like Mary Magdalene. Oh my gosh, what a courageous spiritual leader. And finally, I should be more like Jesus. I should be more like Jesus. It was a rough night. It was a rough night. And... (laughs) Thankfully, thankfully, in the midst of all that, I remembered something else that Jan had taught us. She said, the first rung of this, love, this rise in consciousness is love and compassion. And you cannot feel love and compassion for others until you feel love and compassion for yourself. And the key to really learning love and compassion is to let go of judgment. Amen. <laughs> Thank you is to let go of judgment. And so, of course, to feel love and compassion for ourselves, we must stop judging ourselves. And then she said something, there's the way she worded it, of course, I've heard this before, but she said, each of us is unique. Each of us, she said, is singular. (coughs) Singular. There's no one like you. There's no one that has your attributes, your intentions, your passions, your gifts. No one else. Just you. And knowing that, Any kind of comparison with someone else is ludicrous. It's like comparing one snowflake to another and saying this one's better than that, or this grain of sand is better than that one. The fact is that we all have unique gifts and our own inner voice guiding us in how we share them in our own right time and in our own right way. And realizing that, I came back to my senses. Thankfully, I came back into my heart, and I began to appreciate me. You know, I really, I'm a, I'm a pretty good person. I really love people. I care a lot. I give a lot. I'm doing my best. There's more I could be doing, but I appreciate what we've created here at Unity Renaissance and the fact that we are step by step moving into being an even greater force for good in the world. It's all unfolding in perfect divine timing, and all is well. It was like giving myself a little hug, you know. (laughs) And I invite you to do this. Do it right now. Give yourself a little hug. (laughs) 
take a moment to appreciate what a good and beautiful soul you are. What a sweetheart. There's nobody like you. See yourself through the eyes of love. And truly, that's what gratitude is all about. Gratitude is about seeing through the eyes of love and finding in everything, whether the good times or the hard times, the people we consider our friends or the people we consider adversaries, the things we love about ourselves and the things that are still a work in progress, to be grateful for all of it. Albert Einstein once said, there are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle, and the other is as though everything is a miracle. And so today, to help us get into that perspective, that frame of mind where everything is a miracle, I've brought along my favorite video on gratitude. I've shown it before here, but I love it so dearly. And I invite you as you watch it to really give yourself over to it, to just, just relax into it. Feel it in your heart. Let it soothe you, let it comfort you, let it inspire you. And be aware of this shift in perspective that occurs in you as you watch it so that you can continue to see that way through the holidays and far beyond. You think this is just another day in your life? It's not just another day. It's the one day that is given to you today. It's given to you. It's a gift. It's the only gift that you have right now. And the only appropriate response is gratefulness. If you do nothing else but to cultivate that response to the great gift that this unique day is, if you learn to respond as if it were the first day in your life, and the very last day, then you will have spent this day very well. Begin by opening your eyes and be surprised that you have eyes you can open. That incredible array of colors that is constantly offered to us for pure enjoyment. Look at the sky. We so rarely look at the sky. We so rarely note how different it is from moment to moment with clouds coming and going. We just think of the weather. And even of the weather, we don't think of all the many nuances of weather. We just think of good weather and bad weather. This day, right now, is unique weather maybe a kind that will never exactly in that form come again. The formation of clouds in the sky will never be the same that is right now. Open your eyes, look at that. Look at the faces of people whom you meet. Each one has an incredible story behind their face story that you could never fully fathom. Not only their own story, but the story of their ancestors. We all go back so far. 
And in this present moment, on this day, all the people you meet, all that life from generations and from so many places all over the world, flows together and meets you here like a life-giving water if you only open your heart and drink. Open your heart to the incredible gifts that civilization gives to us. You flip a switch and there is electric light. You turn a faucet and there is warm water and cold water and drinkable water. It's a gift that millions and millions in the world uh, will never experience. So these are just a few of an enormous number of gifts to which we can open your heart. And so I wish you that you will open your heart to all these blessings and let them flow through you. That everyone whom you will meet on this day will be blessed by you. Just by your eyes, by your smile, by your touch, just by your presence. Let the gratefulness overflow into blessing all around you. And then it will really be a good day. Isn't that beautiful? I want you to know on this Thanksgiving week how grateful I am for each and every one of you. And all of you watching online, everyone in our extended family, I'm so grateful for this place, for our past, our present, and our very, very promising future. So thank you all. Let's turn now to our meditation. I invite you to get comfortable in your seat, close your eyes, take a deep breath in, and let go. Releasing into this present moment, feeling the presence of God within you. And breathing into a deep sense a deep knowing that all is well. All is well in our souls. As you relax into this sacred time, I invite you to allow your mind, in your mind's eye, to survey the landscape of your life experiences you've had, how far you've come, the faces of the people who have made such a difference to you, people you love, people you've learned from, people you are still developing an understanding of. And at this moment, breathe into gratitude, feeling the Boundaries of yourself expand out so that you are gratitude, you are gratefulness. And taking that moment to bring yourself into your mind's eye, your sweet, unique, singular self. And take a moment to appreciate you and the beautiful life journey that you are on with gratitude in the silence.
Brother David Stendelrath says that when we are feeling grateful, that gratefulness is when we feel the great fullness of life. In this moment, we feel that fullness within us. We are filled, overflowing with gratitude, and we go forth from this moment ready to share our light, shine our light, share our joy, be the change. And for all of this, we are grateful. Thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. Flow, Spirit, flow through me as I open up to be an expression of your unfolding peace. Show, Spirit, show through me as I open up to be an expression of your unfolding love. You guys sing that so pretty. It's really beautiful when you sing that. Well, speaking of gratitude, now is the time to return to gratitude within us and express that gratitude through our love offering in support of this spiritual community. I invite you to connect with whatever gifts you've received here at Unity Renaissance and give back in kind. And I'd like to take a moment as we prepare our gifts to give a special shout out to those of you who are participating in our unexpected income program because that is all about tithing on unexpected income. Uh, technically, it goes till next Sunday, but we're just seeing amazing things happen. Not only the results we're getting, but what people are reporting about how their blessings just multiplying and increase through that tithing process. So thank you all very, very much for that. Well, the ushers, please come forward. A reminder, as you prepare your gift, if you would like, you can give via your smartphone. You simply text the word give to... Text now. All right, please join me now as you hold your gift in your hand. Join me in our offertory blessing. Together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God.
Thanks for bringing up the children's offering. Let's take a moment to turn within to oh, once again feel gratitude. We're so grateful for these gifts, so generously shared. We give thanks for the gifts. We give thanks for the givers. We give thanks for the joy of giving and receiving. And now we send these forth to do God's work in the world through us. Thank you. And so it is. Amen. Thanks, you guys. Good job, Julia and Sabrina. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> This is a time in our service when we welcome those who are new to Unity Renaissance. If you're here today for the first, second, or third time, we invite you to raise your hand nice and high, holding up the appropriate number of fingers, one, two, or three. Yeah, we got a first timer there. She already got one, but she's still here. Second round, first, first time. <laughs> if you're here for the first time, there's a card in there. Fill that card out. Take it into the bookstore. You get a CD, a copy of a previous service. If you're here for the second time, you get two CDs, one positive uplifting music from Empower Music and Arts. The other is Sacred Unity Prayers and Recordings. On your third visit here, you get a copy of the Daily Word. So thank you to our newcomers, and we're very, very happy that you're here. My mic is out. You sure? Yeah. You tried pushing it already? Yep, yep, it's a deadster. Here comes Natasha. Let's hear for Natasha. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Appreciate that. All right. Now it's his turn. You hear me? Yes. Oh, great. <laughs> So it is that time of year again. Our community outreach is collecting stuffed animals to give to children with AIDS uh, for Christmas. So we ask you to bring your donations of new stuffed animals, bring them into the sanctuary, place them in an open chair. You'll see that we've already got many out here. And uh, between now and December 8th, just fill them with your love. And um, we also ask that if you're feeling a little bit under the weather today, that you hold them close in your hearts and send <laughs> that love to them. Uh, you may have noticed our angel tree is already set up. Thank you to Denise Beckwith for doing that. It's absolutely beautiful out there in the narthex. And what that means is um, there are some ornaments on it, some little angels on it. You take one of those angels, and it has the list of gifts that children who are in need and families that can't afford Christmas gifts, the things they've written that they would like for Christmas. And so in that case, you take that, you go fulfill that list, bring back the unwrapped gifts, new gifts, leave them here. And then we also have uh, ornaments on there. You pull an ornament off, and that's an opportunity to donate a gift card. And the gift cards are primarily used for our own congregants during the year if someone falls on hard times and needs a little bit of extra help. So we give gift cards for gas and restaurants and food and grocery and that kind of thing. So I invite you to take advantage of that. It just feels really good to get in the flow of giving uh, with our angel tree, and that'll be through the holidays. Oh, and now Richard has an announcement. I do. So our remembrance service has become a great tradition that we started last year. It's very uh, moving and uh, beautiful way to remember our loved ones. So I invite you all to participate in that. It, we're going to start with those that we've lost in 2019, and then we, we can move backwards from there to anyone who would like to memorialize their parents or even their pet. Uh, you'll have a chance to s introduce your loved one and light a candle for them, uh, and Michael and I uh, put together a lovely service uh, for that. So, so far, I have gotten zero pictures for the uh, memorial service, so if you'd like to participate in that, be sure to uh, get your picture to me so we can get prepared for you, okay? That's great. Thank you, you know, I think every one of us can think of a loved one that we missed during the holiday. So take advantage of that, 7 o'clock on Wednesday, December the 4th. And now we have, uh, oh, no, okay, no, we don't. Uh, the next... <laughs> Jeez. The next film coming up, our holiday film for this year, is How the Grinch Stole Christmas. How many of you have seen it? 
Okay, some of you have the opportunity. It's really fun. It's actually very touching. Jim Carrey is hilarious in it, uh, but also has a really great message. We're going to skip the, uh, the trailer today just because we're a little bit short on time, but it is wonderful. That's on Friday, December the 6th at 7 p.m., free admission, free popcorn, and, of course, wonderful illuminating discussion after the film. Now I'd like to invite up Jan and Ginger from the bookstore. Ginger Zarski and Janet Adams, our co-managers at the bookstore, who have some wonderful news to share. Good morning. Well, we've been working very hard, Ginger and I, in the bookstore, uh, and we're very excited about some new things. The first thing, would you like to hear what we're excited about? Yes. Okay. The first thing is that the 30% sale is now 50%. And that's on selected books, CDs, and assorted items. The second thing is a raffle on this fabulous cornucopia that you can see in, in the bookstore, made by Denise Beckwith, which will be raffled off at 1 o'clock today so that whoever wins can have it for Thanksgiving. They're $1 tickets and 6 for $5. Now, we also have some new items, which are um, tumblers, hot and cold tumblers with a straw. They're double walled, BPA free, and dishwasher safe. Okay, $11.99 with our logo, Unity Renaissance. We also have <laughs> ornaments. Unity Renaissance ornaments, six ninety nine, and a new selection of notes to self socks. <laughs> we also have a ten below table, which are items, assorted items that are all below ten dollars. Um, they make great holiday gifts and stocking stuffers. Now we have also added to our collection of t-shirts and polo shirts, um, long sleeve tees, <laughs> and hoodies. Yay for the hoodies. <laughs> okay, now we're doing this a little bit different um, because uh, we have uh, each size, we have an assortment. Of, of them, and, and we have one of every size. That's what I'm trying to say. We have one of every size so that you can come into the bookstore, make sure you pick the right size, and then order what you want so that we won't have any problems. But they're, um, the, the tees are $14.99, and the sweatshirts are $21.99. And that's it. All right. Way to go. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. She said it. Okay, a couple of really quick announcements. One is we have beautiful art on our sanctuary walls. If you haven't taken an opportunity, check it out. Really beautiful. And today we're very honored and blessed to have with us the artist who created these beautiful works. Her name's Faye Pledger. She's right here. Uh, let's give her a hand. <laughs> Lovely to have you with us, and we're just loving your artwork. Thank you so much. And do remember that all the art is for sale, and a percentage of the proceeds come to Unity Renaissance. Now, I'd like you all to take a very deep breath in. And release and let go. This year we're going to change the format of the Christmas dinner. Take another deep breath in. Release and let go. It's all going to be okay. I just want you to get in the flow of this here. So the idea is rather than having sponsored tables where we break up into small groups, it's going to be wide open family style. It'll be like a buffet. And we want it that way. Well, thank you. Thank you. It really speaks to my heart, and I know a lot of others of us are sharing this vision, too. We want it to be easy, particularly for those of you who are new to Uni Renaissance, that you feel welcome. You can just walk in the door on the evening. It's uh, December 13th. That's a Friday at 6.30 p.m. Uh, you can just walk in the door and be a part of it. If you bring food, great. If you can't bring food or that doesn't work for you, that's okay, too. So very excited about making this shift. And we need some people on the planning team. So if you're a good planner and you'd like to help us kind of figure out the logistics, please sign up on the hall wall. There's a little sign-up sheet there, and we'll get going on making this happen. Uh, finally, final note, next Sunday, Christopher Naughton will be our 
guest speaker. He'll be speaking on the soul of Christmas. Uh, I'll be attending with my family in tow. By the way, hi, Vivian. I am sure she's watching today. <laughs> I'm excited. Can you tell? But anyway, Christopher's going to do a really fabulous job. He always just goes in so deep into the subject, and I know it'll be a great blessing. He's been working on this for a couple of years, this talk, so it's going to be lovely. Plan to join us for that. I have a quick little thing. There was some money that was dropped in the parking lot, so if you're missing some bills, uh, please come up with, uh, and just tell us how much you might be missing. How much you might be missing. <laughs> no, totally trust you. Anyway, that's it for our announcements. Let's stand together and welcome in our children. Thanks. Thank you for reminding me. We are walking in the light of with the kiddos who'd like to share what you learned today. She's very proud of this, Mom. Yes. Did you have something you wanted to say? Yeah? I am grateful for the world. I am grateful for the world. I'm grateful for the world. Yeah, that kind of covers it. Did you have something you want? Look at your hair. OMG. What a masterpiece. Did you have something to say, dear? We learned about Thanksgiving and what we're thankful for. Aww. <laughs> so did we. We're, every, we're thankful for God. We're thankful for school. We're thankful for church and everything. <laughs> lovely, lovely. Somebody else? Hi, Jack Elliott. Nice to see you, honey. Got something to say? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, we're thankful for God. We're thankful for God. Yes. Sabrina, right? No. Oh, Sienna. <laughs> we are thankful for the universe. We're thankful for the universe and everything in it. All right. You guys have anything? Yes, Isabel. Yeah. Wait, well, the applause. Nice there we go. Today we talked about gratitude and what we want to envision in our lives. Oh. I love that. Gratitude going forward. Thanks in advance. I love that. All right. Did you have some? Oh, Gavin, come on up, dear. Okay. Today we learn about Joseph and the coat of many colors. The lesson was about forgiveness and also release. Wow. That's great. That's fabulous. Let's stand together now and join hands. And before uh, we go into our prayer for protection, I just want to wish each and every one of you and all of you watching online today a very, very meaningful and happy and safe Thanksgiving. Come on up, Lisa. Let's join together now in our prayer for protection, followed by our peace song. Together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is. 